The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants, and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Susan LaBelle. I'm a certified health coach with Optavia and welcome to our Habits of Health call tonight. We have a really fun topic for you. In fact, I, I learned something and I was so excited and I'm beyond excited to share with you guys and um, what, what we have kind of in plan for you. Um, the topic is playing the long game. I have some great co-hosts, uh, my partner and, and friend, Don Chow and Tim Giardino, and you will hear from them here uh, as we get into the call. Um, but when I think of playing the long game, you guys, health is not a game. So it's kind of funny that we're using that, but that is how I kind of think of it is, what does health look like long term, right? We're in it for the long game. We're in it for the long haul. And what does it look like to actually create longevity? And I really love the word longevity, about having more quality years, you know, disease-free years, <laughs> spending time with the people that we love and spending time doing the things that we love. So if you want more longevity, I want to hear from you in the chat. Like, who wants, who wants more of that, right? That's what we're all, we're all doing here. That's what the day-to-day, -day, that's what really matters so that we can create that in the long term. So... Um, I'm going to plug the Habits of Health tonight. Uh, we pulled our information right out of chapters 22 and 23, and we just had to giggle as we were all kind of chatting, going, you know, a lot of us are treating the Habits of Health like any other book, right, where we start from the beginning and we read towards the end. And actually, the book isn't necessarily designed to be read that way. And what can happen is we get stuck thinking that we have to master each habit before we can move on to the next habit. Maybe some of you are, you know, still feel like I haven't mastered the habit of sleep and I'm, I'm stuck on chapter 17. <laughs> I haven't gone to chapter 22, Susan. I don't know what longevity looks like. And what's interesting is the way my brain works is I love to know what the end game is. I like to know where I'm actually going. And reading that part of the book and understanding what it looks like to live a long, healthy, fruitful, purposeful life, when I understand that, it serves me because then I'm excited to show up today and do the little micro habits that are going to help me create that. It also helps me with all that, like get rid of all that minutia of like the little things like, oops, I had three and a half condiments today and like, not going to beat up on myself about something like that. You know, just the little things we get caught up on when really this is about um, having more optimal days than not and creating health long term. So I'm going to start with one of my favorite, my favorite quotes is people do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. And I find that so powerful because if your future is that you want to be around and you have things you want to do and accomplish in your life, that's great, but what we can be in control of is our habits of what we do day in and day out to help us create and be around and be at our best for those things. Um, I have a fun little question to see, uh, to kick it off, and this is out of the book, so I know some of you guys, you guys know this, but to date, how long um, did the oldest human being live? So, like, throw it in the chat, let's see, let's see what you guys are guessing, I like it. 110, I see, some 12s, 130, all in the hundreds, and I know you guys all know that, 111, 125, all right, some people are nailing it, it's 122 years, um, it was a lady, her name was Jean, um, Jean Calment, okay, and what I love is Dr. A, because he's so jovial and fun, he's always like, I'm going to live to 123, because I'm going to beat her, and I'm going to slide in sideways into my grave. What, is he, what he doesn't know is he has some competition because I'm going to live to 124 <laughs> and, and do it that way. No. Um, really, really fun. But how about this? According to science, what is predicted to be the maximum lifespan? So what do they feel the human body capacity? How long do they think we actually, what's our capacity in being able to live? All right, let me look at what we got here. 
150, 90, 85, 140. Some people are already nailing it. Again, 85, 130, 156. Okay, so our max, so this is interesting because some of you guys are nailing life, our capacity and our lifespan. So predicted maximum lifespan is actually 150 years. But what we are currently actually doing is that the, the life expectancy, that's the right, I think, term there, for women is 80 years and the life expectancy for men is 75. But our maximum ability is 150. Guys, like, what can we do, right, to increase that? Um, I mean, that's a lot of life and a lot of years and a lot of memories and a lot of things that can be done um, in those years, and especially if we can make them quality years, you know, free from disease. So how do we do that? Um, the the age-old question, you know, will I either have good genes or is it all about lifestyle? Um, right now, in chapter 22, Dr. A says 20 to 30 percent um, of it is actually is genetic. So there is a component there of, you know, we do have what we've been given, but you guys, 70 to 80 percent of it, over two-thirds is lifestyle. So what's that optimal formula, right? Like, what does that look like? And honestly, Dr. A does an amazing job throughout the whole Habits of Health of laying out what it looks like to put that optimal formula together so that the lifestyle component, so that the part that we can control day in and day out to really maximize our lifespan, right? And kind of create those years at the end. So let me, let me share my story because I was actually one of those that felt like, um, I had genes against me. Okay. <laughs> I turned 40 in three months and they, I guess they used to call that over the hill. I don't even know what that means. Um, because I just feel like I'm getting started. I have more energy now, more vibrancy now, more connections. Now I feel like I know who I am more now than I was 10 years ago and definitely 20 years ago. And finding a picture of myself in my twenties, as you can see, honestly, I only had I only had head up. Anyone can relate to that, right? Couldn't find anything of the body, but I can tell you that um, I definitely felt like not the healthiest 20, 21 year old and um, just kind of thought, well, this is what, you know, I've been dealt. My, my parents have been obese throughout my life and, and um, we didn't get to do all those things like skiing and bike riding. And I knew I wanted that in my, in my life and they were wonderful people. Don't get me wrong, but I always felt like I had this genetic component against me. And you know, come 30s, I lived, you know, some of what they say can be the best years of your life, like kind of believing that lie that I was telling myself. And something switched when I was introduced to Optivia and the community of Optivia, and I lost the, you know, kind of that initial weight. I thought, wait a minute, maybe I, maybe I can be healthy. Like light bulb, right? And it has been an eight year process here of my 30s have just, I have done more things and experienced more things and I've had my children and I feel like I'm coming into my 40s healthier than I was entering into my 30s and so excited about the life that's ahead of me. And that's really what we want for all of you guys too, is to feel like you are getting better with age, you're getting wiser with age, you're, you know, you're connecting, you have more purpose with age. And that's what we're excited about. So where do we learn how to do that? Where do we learn about longevity? Where do we learn about creating more quality years? And there are areas around the world that they have studied. They call them blue zones. Um, and study what makes them have more centurions. Uh, you know, people live well over 100. And even at like 105, you know, they're out uh, building their own fences and building homes. And they are actually like living life too. And here's kind of like the four key concepts and the things that we can learn from those blue zones. First is they are more active. They have more activity in their day. And this may surprise you, but it's not actually exercise. It's not like the typical exercise. It's not like they all have treadmills in their home. <laughs> they just, you know, take the stairs and they garden and they take pride in cleaning up around their, you know, their home. They don't have all the modern conveniences that we have. So they just create more, there's more generally more active. They also have the right outlook. They have this sense of, um, you know, purpose in their life. And in the Okinawan um, culture in Japan, there's a, there's a group there, and that's the, where they've had the most longevity, okay, where they've seen people live the longest. And they have a word called ikigai. 
Um, and ikigai, if you ask anyone, they all know what their ikigai is. You're probably going, Susan, do I, you know, is there a spelling test later? The answer is no. <laughs> but what ikigai means um, is the reason in which you wake up in the morning. So do you know your ikigai? Like, and we're talking like they don't even have a word for retirement. There isn't a word in their culture for retirement because their whole life is centered around their ikigai. That, I love that. They also eat wisely. They're, they're very plant-based, um, these, all these areas, low salt, high fiber, antioxidant rich foods. And what I found really interesting about the Okinawan culture as well is they, have, they eat more soy there than any other population on earth. Interesting, right? And they live the longest. They also have a philosophy of something they say before every meal. Here's another, like, it's, it's harahachibu. <laughs> I had so much fun with this, you guys. <laughs> I love it. They say it before a meal, and it's their reminder to stop eating when they're 80% full, right? They understand this concept that its body takes time to feel complete fullness, so you stop when you're 80%, and it's, it's actually cultural to follow that 80% rule so they don't overeat and have those some of those gluttonous ways that we have brought into our American culture. And then last but not least, they're very connected. They have a sense of belonging. They're really connected to their family and they hang out with people that have all these same philosophies. They find that that alone, that kind of really rich tribe of people, that common core and values helps them stay healthy and live longer. So with that, you guys, um, I hope I taught you something new and excited to bring on my friend, um, Dawn. We, um, we've been on this journey for a long time together. She's got some great nuggets to share with you from her nursing background and also just from supporting and encouraging people. So Dawn, I'm going to pass the mic to you. Thank you, Susan. And um, just congratulations, everyone, for being on the call tonight. And Susan, I loved the little tidbits and the nuggets that you shared and that that's the research that went into the habits of health. Those two chapters were fascinating to me. And I have to admit, you guys, I, it had been a little bit since I'd gone back and reread through them and really thought about that application to our lives. So I'm just excited to share a little bit with everyone tonight, just about health at any age. And, you know, I thought about that and it all started with my story and then my dad's story because we really came at this from you know two diff two totally different backgrounds but yes we had the same genetics but i was 30 and my dad was 64 and it all started eight years ago when i was working full-time as a registered nurse here in oregon at a level one trauma center and I went into nursing because I wanted to help people, but what I saw was what was going on in our healthcare system, right? And it's really sick care anymore. Um, and I saw people coming in sicker and sicker. Um, they had a lot of obesity related medical problems. And I saw us as a team of medical providers giving, giving them more and more medications, but we weren't really fixing anything. And then it was a wake up call for me when nine years into my nursing career, I started to have some physical ramifications of my own health. See, I'd put myself on a back burner and I had gained some weight and I was going down a trajectory that I could see if I kept going at that rate, I was going to not live the life I wanted to live. And um, I had watched my father who used to be an athlete, by the way, that's the strapping young man on the right side of the screen, my dad used to be a high school athlete, but what happened was um, through daily choices and habits, his health started to slip away. And I could see that that was happening for me. So thankfully for this amazing community and our awesome program, I was able to get my health back on track and actually so was my husband. Um, and that was something that rippled into my family. And what we saw was my dad um, ended up losing 127 pounds. But what he gained was a totally different trajectory in his life. And what I loved as I dove in to helping people change their lives and then reading the habits of health is that Dr. Anderson was talking about this third era of healthcare. And that's where we're really going into right now. That's what Susan was talking about with those blue zones and how we're doing the research and looking at what are those habits for sustainable longevity and and what does that look like? And how do you add that into your lives? 
And so by doing that, we're able to increase our long-term health. I mean, my dad is now 70. He turned 70 this year and his physician told him eight years ago that he probably wasn't going to live that much longer. Um, he couldn't even walk a hundred feet without his lips turning blue, his triglycerides, his blood pressure, all of that were just off the charts. And because he made the decision to make a change, he's now healthy. He's now able to do the things that he loves. You know, we can't make any medical claims. I'm just sharing my own personal story and that of my father's, but he doesn't take any medications now, zero prescription medications. And he's able to get out and do the things that he loves to do. And what he did was he made the decision to um, change his habits, change the way he was eating, lose the weight and learn how to um, really grab onto health. And that's what I'm excited that we're gonna talk about tonight with all of us and that wake up call for me rippled into my father's life. And now we're both able to live a higher quality life. And I'm sure that we're both going to live a lot longer. Um, so anyways, just hopefully that story resonates with someone out there, but health is possible at any age. It's not too late and it's never too early to just start making some changes. So um, that kind of brings me to the next topic of where do you want to be? If you knew you couldn't fail, so I just invite you to take a moment right now, maybe close your eyes and just think about this. If you knew you couldn't fail and you knew it wasn't too late and you knew that you could change small things today that would make a huge impact long-term, what would you do? What would you start today? And what would you like to create in your health? Because I think we've all, um, you've probably noticed that working with your health coach, they're asking those questions about what is it that health looks like for you? What would be a win in your life? And how would that change the people's lives around you? And how would that change the trajectory of where you're at in 10 years? Because I could see where I was going in 10 years. I probably was going to have an injury and not be able to be a nurse anymore. Um, it was going to impact my life tremendously. So where do you want to be? And we're going to talk about some of the simple changes. And we actually have six steps to our process, which is awesome. This is our process and our philosophy of optimal health. And there's six steps and a lot of people get stuck on step two, right? Cause that's kind of um, the fun snazzy step where people are reaching healthy weights and they have lots of victories, um, you know, but that is just the beginning because the end game really steps five and step six, that is where the awesome part of it kind of congeals. And we start literally enjoying our healthy bodies, living our healthy lives, um, having higher quality years later on in life. So you hopefully all have your Optavia guide. Check out pages five or um, steps five and six in that guide and read about that because that's really um, where the rubber hits the road and where the fun begins because you can optimize your health for your age and then you can live those quality years doing the things that you love to do, um, you know, long term. So Chapter 23 in Dr. Anderson's Habits of Health book is his longevity, longevity plan. And that is where I would say, you know what, at any time you can open that book, crack it to that chapter and start reading and checking out some really cool things. Um, the continuum of health. This is one of the things that we all start off as non-sick, but as we move towards our continuum, oftentimes the daily things that we choose to do will take us either towards sickness or towards the state of ultra health. Dr. Anderson talks about that. Back when I was, you know, nine years ago nursing, I was moving towards sickness just by my daily actions, the things I was choosing to do. And so was my dad. But by making that change, we've been able to move towards non-sick to optimal health to ultra, to ultra health. And the cool thing is, you guys, so men's life expectancy, if you're sick, is less than 75 years. Dr. Anderson talks about really um he believes that we can increase our life expectancy by 20 years and that's science and that's um in the book but so for women that's increasing our life expectancy to 100 years and for men that's increasing the life expectancy to 95. that's amazing that's a lot of years that we can spend with people that we love and doing the things that we love to do so as we move on to oh yes a question um, so I have a question before we head into this um, last topic of your path to health. And, and before I turn it over to Tim, um, do you believe, so this is just yes or no, can you slow or reverse the aging process? 
So just pop it in the chat if you think it's possible to. I'm getting lots of yeses. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. I love it. So here's the thing. We can't stop the aging process, but you can absolutely slow or reverse it. And Dr. Anderson talks about no matter what shape you're in right now, no matter where you're at now, making a change in our habits can drastically change the progression of our aging and the overall aging process. So I love it. So now we're going to talk about your health plan. So where are you now? Where do you want to be? Um, and what does that look like? What are some things that you can do right now to drastically change your health? Okay. So you can check out page 293 in Dr. A's book, but he talks about some amazing things that are really simple, like, okay, um, getting your yearly checkup, making sure that you wear your seatbelt when you drive. A lot of these are common sense and a lot of these we do all the time, but just double checking and being mindful. Um, obviously not texting and driving, getting your teeth cleaned twice a year. Those little mundane things add up over time and it's amazing um, what they can add into that drastically um, changes where we're going long-term. So um, eliminating food toxins, having clean water. I love that our Optavia feelings are clean label. So you're making sure you're getting clean foods put into your body. Um, anyways, those are just things, getting your cancer screenings and things like that. So those are all things you can do right now. Um, I'm excited to turn it over to Tim, who's going to be talking a little bit more about um, really managing your energy and focusing on surrounding yourselves with, uh, with a community of support. So Tim, I'm gonna hand it over to you to take it away. Thanks, Don. Appreciate that. And um, yeah, just I'd like to share just a little bit of my story. And um, uh, so I've always been an athlete. I've always enjoyed, you know, good health and and um, up to the age of 30 when I had a, uh, a back injury and um, uh, surgery that uh, didn't quite go uh, well. It took me a long time to recover from. Um, by the time I got into my um, uh, 40s, I was, um, you know, north of 250 pounds and very frustrated. I literally tried everything that I could find to, uh, to help manage that. Um, uh, when I started feeling better, I just started running. And so that's kind of, um, you can see this, uh, the, this uh, picture in 2009. That was me at um, uh, kind of a healthier weight because I was uh, uh, spending a lot of time dieting and running. And, um, um, and then in 2012, after I um, uh, found this amazing program that literally changed everything for me. You can see the, uh, the difference in, um, in my physicality. And, um, but even more than that, you know, um, you know, prior to, uh, you know, finding this program and, and actually getting healthy, I had some other issues creeping up. I had, um, you know, some inflammation that was causing vertigo and daily episodes of vertigo and uh, high cholesterol and things like that, just being tired and stressed and just kind of not doing really well, not being my best self. So, um, so it was really a, um, uh, it was a, a, an amazing um, uh, blessing to have this, uh, to be able to find this and to be able to really just kind of turn my health around. <clears throat> and now at, um, at 57, I'm, uh, I'm healthier than I was at 47 for sure. So, uh, so uh, when Don said, uh, you know, asked the question about can you reverse things? Absolutely, you can reverse things. You can take control and absolutely reverse um, a, a lot of the, uh, the things that are caused by, um, you know, just uh, basically for me, it was a bad diet. So, um, can we go to the next slide? There you go. So. This, I, I love the slide because it really does kind of lay out um, uh, kind of uh, this journey that we're on. Um, yeah, beforehand, you know, when we are in, uh, when we're in the mode where we're actually um, gaining weight, uh, it's because that um, we're taking in more calories and, and more energy than our body actually needs. And so the, um, the excess uh, energy is stored in our fat cells. You know, and then fat cells actually uh, use energy. So uh, when you diet to lose weight, uh, you actually decrease your metabolic demands. And then as a result, um, the amount of energy that the uh, fat cells use, use actually decreases significantly as well. And so when we diet to lose weight, um, uh, most dieters like myself, and I fluctuated quite a bit, uh, but we, um, we, tend to go back to our pre-diet eating habits. 
um, but our, our lighter bodies actually need less energy. And so when we go back to eating the way that we used to eat, um, we actually start kind of ballooning and, and putting that weight back on. Um, uh, and that's actually why a uh, low carb diet actually uh, really doesn't have a chance to um, you know, create long-term success. Uh, it's, the, uh, you know, it's the classic yo-yo uh, pattern, which I was stuck in for about 15 years. So I totally get that. Um, but on our plan in, in uh, phase one, it's really just the beginning of our, our optimal health journey. Um, so what happens in phase one is we, uh, you know, you reach your healthy goal weight. You reach it by not only reducing the, um, the amount of calories, but you're also learning how to, um, uh, to choose wiser, uh, you know, um, healthier, you know, low glycemic foods um, that actually turn your, um, uh, your body's fat storage machine into basically it's a, a fat burning machine, which gets pretty exciting too. So, um, and then when we move to phase two, we, we shift our focus uh, a little bit by increasing both um, our caloric uh, intake and our uh, caloric expenditure. So we add more um, healthy movement uh, along, along the way as well. As we start feeling better, we want to move more. Um, and this actually helps us to reach our, our equilibrium, uh, the, the balance between energy in and energy out. And that's, that's actually a, a very fun state because that's where we're able to maintain um, our healthy weight. And then from there, we move to uh, phase three. And that's where we actually continue to um, uh, add uh, you know, uh, muscle by increasing our, our healthy activity. Um, in which we'll talk about in just a minute, but, um, and you also, kind of, it's kind of fun too, because you actually get to um, increase your caloric intake a little bit as well. So that's always a, a kind of a fun bonus. Um, but then moving to stage four, like, and that's kind of what we're really talking about now is, is longevity and how to, um, how to really kind of take our health to another level. And uh, longevity, you know, it actually uh, takes you beyond optimal health. Uh, um, it actually puts your body in a state of, um, you know, um, ultra health, or ultra efficiency uh, is another way of, of saying it. So, um, so just kind of following this and uh, um, just this progression of, of health and learning the healthy habits. And again, uh, we don't have to learn them uh, sequentially, but we just, you know, keep doing better every day. And then and this is a fun slide for me. Um, I love my uh, healthy community. Um, we, I like to say that success leaves clues. And so, um, you know, when you want to be successful at something, we do what successful people do. And people that are successful on their health journeys, you know, we want to surround ourselves with those people. I mean, we're, we are like the people, that, the five people that we spend the most time with. You know, so surround yourself with healthy-minded friends. You know, find healthy activities to do. You know, um, you can start a walking group or join a bowling league. Um, uh, you know, uh, go biking with your friends or even take a healthy cooking class. Something that helps you to stay focused on your healthy journey. But whatever you do, just, I mean, do whatever floats your boat and get you moving because that's, you know, kind of the name of the game. Uh, Don had mentioned that earlier that uh, I think that maybe Susan did about the um, uh, just staying active and, and staying active is a very important part of staying healthy. Thanks guys. Awesome, Tim. I love it. And, and um, yes, I mean, that's what you see is that people feel this sense of, you know, belonging. I know I felt that the minute I really dove into um, Optavia and the community and, and met everybody. And so I love that. And I love that it's true. There's studies to show we become like the people that we surround ourselves with. So if you're going to surround yourself with unhealthy people, like, you know, good luck to you, right? Like, come on, like we want to make sure, sorry for the bold this year. I'm, I'm known for that around here. It's just, if your desire is to have long year, you want to be around people that want the same things because everything else will line up accordingly. So I'm going to leave you guys tonight with, um, I hope you guys have a fresh perspective. I mean, that's really what we desire for you is to actually think of longevity. And I, sometimes it's not where we focus because reality is day in, day out, you know, yeah, you, you know, this morning you're, 
Doug peed on the carpet and you, you know, you spilled whatever. I mean, it's just like we get kind of caught up in the day to day. But really what I want to leave and encourage you guys with is that what you do today matters. And sometimes we don't feel like that. Like, does it really matter? It does. It all plays into it. So are you playing the long game? And so who cares if you had an off meal? Who cares if you're playing the long game, right? Because next meal, next time you can refocus, you're all in because you're in it and you're building the habits and you're you know, creating the mindsets and you're around the people to really create those long-term results. So I love that the Habits of Health is based on science. A couple people asked, we we're referencing chapters 22 and 23, some amazing, amazing content in there. Don, you got me excited about 20 more years of my life. And in fact, I was like, what am I going to, am I going to play with my grandbabies, grandbabies? I'm dancing at weddings. I see myself traveling the world and going on mission trips and I want to take up art. And oh my goodness, like I just got all excited. So I hope you guys are dreaming about what are you going to do with those extra 20 years that you're creating because you're establishing the habits now to give you the future that you desire. So thank you guys. Um, I should actually speak to the slide that's right in front of me about luck because I think some people feel like my uncle lived till 105. He was sure lucky. <laughs> I don't believe in luck, guys. I believe it, it. it's work and there's always a grind behind it. And chances are he had really solid habits to allow him to live to 105. Like I said, there's genes that come into it. But at the end of the day, don't make luck your strategy. Don't also make genes your excuse. Just go all in and decide today that you're going to take control of that 70, 80% of lifestyle, create the habits to create the life that you want. Thank you guys. The following audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.